What's up everyone, it's Q from Retro Q Gaming and my mind is currently absolutely blown. My world is upside down, my universe is inside out, black is left, right is up, yellow is a fruit, I don't know, it's... Shit is just all over the place and why is shit absolutely all over the place? Well, two reasons anyway. So, I'm not really sure which to start with so I'm just going to rant about it. Or ramble rather, rant would imply kind of a bad... Uh, negative connotation so the last couple of days i've been playing through resident evil 1 and 2 which i've completely recorded but uh, you know usually i i play the, through these games on a fairly regular basis maybe every one or two years sometimes a little bit more sometimes a little bit less but i've been a fairly regular and steady player of them since since they released and especially when they released, I'd play them multiple times a day for months on end. And so, I mean, again, I, yeah, I'm just, everything is all over the place in my mind right now. So excuse me if I'm, I'm well, all over the place. But I, I'd always considered Resident Evil 1 to be my best and favorite Resident Evil. And that, that's been the case for nearly 20 years now. And... Now suddenly, I I'm I'm calling that into question, and I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure that Resident Evil Two is now my favorite Resident Evil game, and like I said, I play these games on a fairly regular basis, so it's not like you know I, it's not like I haven't played it in ten years and then I just suddenly turned it back on. I was like, wow, I forgot how good this was and. I'm just in nostalgia mode and in, you know, X game mode. So, I mean, I, I'm usually fairly level-headed about it, but now it just, it makes so much sense and it just blows my mind. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, Resident Evil 1 is still an absolutely amazing game. It's, I, I can't even get a word out to describe it. It's just twisting over my own tongue. But it's just, I mean, it's such a great and important and just i won't say emotional but um i don't know it's so uh like i said it, it's it's such an important game and my, again my words are failing me here um because i'm completely dumbstruck uh, to to those of you out there listening to this is th this is a huge deal for me this basically changes like the last 15 plus well between like 15 to 18 years of my life something major that was in there has just changed and now yeah so i mean like i said resident evil 1 it's still fantastic in what it does and it, it it's the it, the birth of survival horror so i mean that that's that's even extra points on top of it but just playing resident evil 2 okay yes as as sequels go they usually take what you had in the first one, and I, I'll say improve on it. Uh, I'm most of them. I say improve on it anyway. But uh, improve is not always a good thing. Usually, sometimes they go over the top, or sometimes they just change drastically. Hence, why improve was sarcastic. But in Resident Evil Two, that's not the case. I mean, not only had it it improved on basically all the systems in, in Resident Evil 1. It, it, it was mechanically and technically improved. I mean, the, just the movement and controls and just everything was, was more streamlined and more efficient. Now, that, that, goes, that goes, what I would say, and usually in a sequel, simply because they've improved on what was there originally. And as the hardware is still the same but they can do slightly more with the engine and they make some slight improvements so yeah that makes perfect sense but i mean some of the the stuff that was in it is just crazy and th this might even turn into a like a one of those retrospective videos that i keep promising i'm gonna make but it, it could turn into a, a ghetto version of one of them but it especially what what really did it for me in, in now, I didn't do it this time, but, I mean, I've done it many, many times back in the day. It's just the thought, that the fact that you could not only play through the main campaign, the first campaign, using w whichever of the two characters you wanted, but once you finished their campaign, the fact that you could 
run the parallel campaign, the other character doing their version of everything at the same time as going on the first one. So it would inter- interweave with the story of that you'd already just played. And there's even a, there's even a part, as I'm sure anyone anyone knows by now, is that um, there, there's two specific items that you can either you're you're playing through the first campaign and you can you have the choice to either take them or leave them now if you take them they're not in there should you play the second one the the second alternate campaign to go with that one and if you if you leave them they're there for for the other person a perfect example is last when i was playing this one i was using leon now because i wasn't planning on playing claire's alternate campaign i just i took the pack the, the side pack and the machine gun so they wouldn't be there for Claire, but that's because I wasn't planning on playing it with her. But uh, just the fact that all that kind of thought and detail would go in to to, to this kind of thing on, on a PS One game, mind you, is just crazy. It's it it blows my mind. Like I said already, and as I'm pretty sure I'm demonstrating, the second thing. And uh, this this could possibly this is probably even bigger than the first one. Is I was playing Resident Evil Two. Now when I play usually when I play my like Resident Evil One, Two, Three, a lot of my old retro games, usually I will play my physical edition. Now what I in the case of the PS One games, because the PS Three has physical PS One backwards compatibility, what I do is I grab my discs and I just throw them into the throw them into the console. So, in this time I felt lazy. So what I did was, yeah, I've, I've played, a good example is I played through Metal Gear Solid recently, as you saw by a lot of the footage on there, and I used my digital copy of that this time. Now, because of that, it's a European digital copy, which will make more sense to what I'm going to say now in a second, and when I played Resident Evil 1, or Resident Evil Director's Cut, a few days ago, again, that was my digital copy, and that was a, a European digital copy. But last night when I was playing Resident Evil 2, I did use my digital copy, but it was an American digital copy. Now, I remember not thinking much of a difference at, at the time, and then when I did turn on Resident Evil 2 for the first time uh, last night with the digital one, the first thing that comes up, I notice, is you have the PlayStation logo, and instead of what usually says SCEE, which is Sony Computer Entertainment in Europe, which is basically on like all my games because you know I live in Europe, this one says SCEA, so it's obviously Sony Computer Entertainment of America, and I'm just thinking, oh yeah, I forgot this is, this is the American one. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That, that's that's kind of cute, and I start playing it. I was like, holy shit, this this feels so much better than the first one, and. I'm just thinking, and I was like, okay, yeah, it makes perfect sense. It, it, it it's Im- they've improved the technical aspects from the hardware. They've improved the engine. They've improved the, the the mechanical side of it by tightening it all up and all. And I played it for the next maybe twenty minutes. I was playing. I was like, oh, wow, this this is crazy. It probably wasn't even twenty minutes actually. I I know exactly where it was in game. It was after you get off the bus outside and. As you're running, you've got off the bus and you're running through an open area on the road and you're about to go into the outer front garden of the, the police station. And that's exactly where I realized it. And running up to that gate was, was like something about this just plays and feels so much different. What is this? This is crazy. And then I played it for another couple of minutes and then it hit me because I'm using the American digital copy. This is running at 60 hertz. And because of old school gaming and old style gaming, uh, 60 hertz back then translates to 30 FPS. Whereas all my digital games, all my European copy digital games and my physical copy digital games, which would be the ones I've played all these years, including recently on the PS3, which would translate to 25 FPS. And (laughs) believe it or not, For all you people out there that say, you know, 30 FPS, 60 FPS, 120 FPS, you know, no difference, doesn't matter. Playing through the the wonders of software emulation and modern hardware in TVs and consoles, I finally got to play 
Resident Evil 2 at 60 hertz 30 fps and displayed properly that way and it just it absolutely blew my mind how much of a difference there was it was absolutely crazy and it was so enjoyable now i had remembered once once it hit me i was like okay hang on i have to check this footage and i i went straight to my my ui and i was looking i was like it, sure enough it was right there in front of me recording at 30 fps whereas usually when i record the other stuff and the, for example the the digital copies of the european digital copies of metal gear solid recently and Resident Evil Director's Cut, both European, cop- European digital copies, they both recorded at 25 FPS because PAL games are 50 Hz, which translated in old style to 25 FPS because of interlacing and all. So, because games weren't progressive now, back then, but thanks to, the, like I said, thanks to the hardware and all. So, it's, it, it, it was crazy. It was such a better experience. And at first, I was thinking, like, wait a minute. Maybe it's just because I'm coming from Resident Evil 1, which I had played the day before. I was like, okay, hang on, maybe maybe it's just because of that. So what I did was I went and got my physical Resident Evil 2, which is obviously a European-Irish copy. Stuck it into my PS3. Started playing for like a couple of minutes. Checked my, uh, my input, uh, signal input. Sure enough, 25 FPS. And straight away, I could notice the difference when I was playing. And it was just crazy. I went straight back to Resident Evil 2, to my digital 30 FPS, 60 hertz copy. And it's it's just crazy. And I'm most likely going to play Resident Evil 3, either maybe today or tomorrow or sometime very, very soon. And I'm going to, I have a European physical copy, which will be 50 hertz, aka 25 FPS. But I also have a, an American digital copy, which is going to be 60 hertz, 30 FPS. No points for guessing which one I'm actually going to use. But either way, playing the entire game and just how fluid those extra five frames made it and how much smoother and just how much slicker the entire game played. Just from, again, just from five more FPS. Now, I'm, this isn't about you know, 30 FPS, 60 FPS, 120 FPS, 144 FPS. That's not what this video is about. The fact is, I grew up on Resident Evil 2, 50 hertz, all these years, played it all this time, and then suddenly, I'm playing a, an even better version of this game, a 30 hertz version, sorry, a 30 FPS, 60 hertz version of this game. You can imagine how much that absolutely destroyed my mind. Now, it also probably, arguably, helped a little bit with bringing it to my, you know, my my possible now Resident Evil Two. But a lot of people consider Resident Evil Two the best Resident Evil game. I don't, <laughs> I definitely don't argue with them now. But I never argued with them before about it because I could see why they could think that, and now. It's just, I, I don't even know what to say. It's combined with what I was saying at the start of this video of how my opinion has changed and and just the difference that playing this American copy is has made. It's just... It's, I was going to say astounding, but that, that's not even... That's not even... It doesn't express it properly. I just want to say phenomenal. So it's just absolutely crazy so for those of you watching here on youtube i don't even know if you'll be able to tell with this footage and um, because of how youtube treats it i did record my previous ones and encode them in 25 fps for the the ones that were encode ones that were recorded in 25 fps i would re-encode them in 25 fps and upload them whereas this one is going to be done in 30 and and put up so i'm not sure how youtube handles all that but another one is that this may be, this this might not be any different to you. I mean, if you're a, an American user or a North American user, 
you could you would be used to this you, 60 hertz would be your standard from from back in the day for for this kind of shit so you know it, it, this might be an eye opener now what i also find a bit little bit interesting and i'm just going to make this the the last little point in the video is that the whole frame rate issue was always there it disappeared mostly at the start of the the ps1 era because because it was such a move from say when you come from the, the super nintendo or the mega drive or genesis if you're a north american user again when you come from a, a 2d 2d style platform such as those to a 3d style platform such as the ps1 you know th stuff like that would would kind of disappear to the wayside because it was such a big different improvement uh, that that was really the focus but back in the super nintendo day the whole 50 hertz 60 hertz thing was a big deal over here at least here in europe we were always pissed off that we would get 50 hertz games whereas you would have 60 hertz games in in the US and Canada and all that. And especially because even like 60 hertz TVs became more common during the Super Nintendo era over here. So yes, when it first released, 60 hertz TVs were either not available or they were just extremely rare. But even after a couple of years of it being released, 60 hertz was became like almost widely available if not an almost standard yet everything over here is still 50 hertz broadcast and official standards and all that kind of shit so it's it's mind blown anyway that after all this time i i've i i've <laughs> again i i'm struggling for words i can essentially play what i want what i will call i've essentially played i should say the definitive edition of resident evil 2 on playstation 1 and it was just so much better for it and wow <laughs> that's all i could say but i'm gonna leave the video here anyway because i feel like i've restated the same couple of points over and over to beat them to death at this point and i'll just keep doing it if i keep talking so let me know in the comment section below how if you've ever had any experiences with comparing a, an old 50 hertz game versus an old 60 hertz game if you've ever had anything like that or if you're a north american user and just playing at 60 hertz was you know was your standard let me know if you've ever heard anything um uh, from say news outlets or other people in, in in real life or online that's like wow you know this looks so someone comes over to your house and it's like wow this is so different from what i played back in europe and or if you've always heard whatever in magazines and all it's like people outraged that getting 50 hertz and it's it's just crazy so let me know all that in the comment section below hit the like button hit the subscribe button you can follow me on twitter details in the description below Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the rest of the videos in my channel while I go and try sort my my absolute existence out at the moment because it's completely all over the place. Thanks for watching. Thanks for paying attention to this video. See you again on the videos in my channel.